today I'll show you how to add a pop-up that allows users to undo an action that they just took within your Power Apps. Sometimes they can get click happy and click something that they didn't mean to or delete an item that they weren't supposed to. So in this video, I'll show you how to add that to your app and give them the option to undo whatever they just did. So follow along and let's go. For this demo, I've created a SharePoint list called tasks, and I've only included three columns to keep it simple, but you definitely can and probably should add more to yours. I have the default title column and I created two custom columns. Status is a choice between in progress and completed, and this deleted column is a simple text field. The trick here is when we delete a task in Power Apps, we won't actually delete it in our SharePoint list. Instead, we're going to set its deleted column to yes, and our Power Apps gallery will filter it out. That's because there's no good way to recover a deleted item from SharePoint through Power Apps. And with that out of the way, let's hop over to Power Apps and get started. I've created a blank canvas app and created two screens. The first I've titled screen tasks, which is where we'll have our gallery to display all of our tasks. And the second is a screen form, which we'll use to create our form inputs so we can make changes to our tasks. So first we need to add our SharePoint list as a data source. So let's click on data, add data and search for a SharePoint. Click on your site and then select the list. In my case, this is called tasks. Now let's insert our gallery. I'm going to choose a vertical gallery and set its items property to this. We filter our list where the deleted column is blank and this will only show tasks that we haven't marked as deleted. With our gallery set up, we need to actually store the selected task in a variable and navigate to the form screen where we can make the changes. So let's select the right arrow icon and we're going to change its on select property to this. The first thing that will happen is the task we just selected will get stored inside a variable called var task. This allows us to reference this task and its values. I'm also storing the same task in another variable called var task old to keep track of the original value in case the user decides they want to undo, which is the whole point of this video. And I'm also establishing another variable called var task type and setting that to edit so we can distinguish whether the item we just selected is a new item or not. We're going to then navigate to our form screen and we'll use that to establish a variable called var popup undo, which will control the visibility of our popup. We set it to false initially. We also want the ability to create a new task. So let's insert an add icon on our screen. And set its on select property to this. This is the same code that we just went over, except instead of selecting a task and storing it in our variables, we set them as a blank and label the task type as a new item. So here you can rearrange your screen the way you like. I've just made this a little narrower. I also added the status value and I just added a general title for my page and moved the add button up here. By holding the alt button and clicking the right arrow of this task, we store its values into our variables and we can now start creating our form screen. As part of our form, we want to add the ability to edit the task title and status. So first let's insert a text input and set its default property to var task dot title. So you can see it pulled the data from the task that we selected in our previous screen. Now let's insert a dropdown. Drag it over here and set its items property to choices from our SharePoint list, which is choices tasks dot status. And let's also change its default value to var task dot status dot value. Now to make this form functional, we need to add some action buttons. So let's add a button and rename it submit. Let's also set its on select property to this. What we're doing here is updating our variable var task with a patch function, which updates the task with the values we set in our text input and selected dropdown. You'll also notice I have an if statement where if the task is new, we create a new item using the defaults function. Otherwise, we just update the task we have selected. After this, we navigate back to our task screen and make the undo pop-up visible. Now let's add another button, drag it down here and change that title to delete. And let's update its on select property to this. 
This is similar to the code we just went over, except we patch the selected tasks deleted property to yes. And again, we navigate to our task screen and make the undo pop-up visible. Now let's hold our control button and click the submit button so we can create our undo pop-up. First, let's add a container to act as our pop-up window. And let's set its visible property to our variable that we created earlier, var popup undo. Right now it's set to true, so it'll remain visible. And when it's set to false, it's gonna get hidden. You can change its color as well. I'm just gonna make it a light gray. And within the container, let's insert a button and title it undo. And let's update its on select property to this. Let's go over what we're doing here. We're using a switch function, which is used to evaluate a single expression and return different results based on that expression. This means whenever our statements are true, execute the corresponding code. The first thing we check for is if our selected task is new, and if it is, we want our undo button to delete it. If it's not a new task, we check if the task's deleted column says yes, and if it does, then update its deleted column back to blank. If it's not a new item and not a deleted item, then when we click this undo button, we update the task with the title and status from our previous version, which we stored in the variable var task old. After that's executed, we set our pop-up variable to false, which will hide it from the user. In case the users don't want to undo and they wanna just close the pop-up, let's give them the ability to do that. So I'm gonna search for a cancel icon and insert it within our container and I'll put it right here. Then let's set its on select property to set the var popup undo variable to false, which as we went over earlier is just gonna hide the popup. Now, if the user doesn't take any action, I wanna add a 10 second countdown. And if it reaches zero, I want it to hide the popup. So again, within the container, let's insert a timer. I'm gonna put it right here and just make it smaller. And we're gonna change some of its properties. Let's set the duration to 10,000. This just means 10 seconds. Let's change its text property to only display seconds. And in order to make it count down, let's do 10 minus itself. And it's just gonna do a countdown instead of a count up. Let's update its auto start to var popup undo. So the timer starts when the popup becomes visible. Let's go to the advanced tab. And on timer end, let's set the var popup undo variable to false, which means if the timer runs out, it's just gonna hide the popup. We also want the timer to reset every time the popup is hidden. So let's set the reset value to the opposite of var popup undo. Now let's see it all in action. Let's create a new task and delete it by clicking undo. I'll call it go for a run keep it in progress and then submit. Now let's click the undo button and we can see it's gonna disappear from the bottom. And it's been deleted from our data source. Now let's select this task and click the delete button. We can see it disappeared because it's been filtered out. Now when I click undo, it brings it right back. Now let's say we change the title and progress of this task. Let's call this record a video longer than 10 mins and change it to completed. And let's hit the submit button. We can see it took the actions and let's say we wanna undo, it's gonna revert back to the way it was. And in our last scenario, let's make an update to a task and let the timer just run out. So let's set change this to completed, click submit, and the timer is just gonna run. And when it reaches zero, Let's see what happens. Perfect. So it hid the it hid the pop-up and it didn't do anything to the data. I hope this helped you guys. If you want to see a written version of this tutorial along with all of the code, check out the link in the description. And until next time, happy power apping.